Hey, my name is Jared Moon, and I'm part of a group of underground athletes you've probably never even heard of before. We don't rely on fancy equipment for training, and most of us don't even have gym memberships. In fact, our motivation comes from within. You see, we have jobs, families, and responsibilities, but we still have big goals, and they aren't getting achieved at a global gym. For that reason, we have to do things differently. Our training has to be smarter. We don't have every piece of equipment known to man or a ton of time to train, and we don't need it because we are achieving amazing things without it. So how do we do it? If you ask your average personal trainer or gym goer, they'd call us crazy. Yet we're seeing results better than most every single day. And it's happening by blending mental training with physical training and becoming an athlete. What we call, and welcome to, Garage Gym Athlete. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Jared Moon here, and welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. With me is Joe Courtney. What's up, Joe? What is up, Jared? And we have Tiffany O'Hearn. How's it going, Tiffany? Very well, thank you. Very well. Yeah, glad to have you on the podcast today, and I'm going to let you get started by uh, telling us a little bit more about yourself, what you do, and uh, how you train. Yeah, that's great. So I, um, well, currently... Uh, right out of my garage, thanks to you. Um, but uh, I'm 35. I am um, from Boston, Massachusetts, or just right outside of Boston, Massachusetts. And I uh, started doing CrossFit probably about seven years or so ago. Um, before that, was just more or less in and out of the gym with a um, sort of unclear picture of um, what it meant and uh, really what I was doing. So it's kind of an interesting thing when you look back at you know, you, sure, I went to the gym. I went five days a week, and 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 I had um, great sweat sweat sessions. But but I don't know if they were necessarily effective. And it, it's funny the more that you progress through um, this type of programming, or even CrossFit in general, uh, just how different um, life can be uh, when you step out of that gym and 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 step more into um, I don't know the physical realm of of going beyond you know standard machines, I guess. Um, so I've been, um, been pretty active with sports all my life. Um, played softball, even played it as an adult, uh, for like eight, 10 years. I actually just stopped last year after the birth of my daughter. So, uh, those softball days are over, but, um, maybe someday I'll get back into that. So uh, I bike, I road bike, uh, I have a mountain bike. I, um, I pretty much just love to do anything physical. I like the ability to, um, climb a mountain if I so choose or hike a wall, not, excuse me, not hike a wall, but, uh, you know, go, go rock climbing. If I, if I, if I want, um, just kind of have the ability to do whatever I want, whenever I want physicality wise and, um, try not to have any barriers when it comes to that. So that's, that's what I train for. I train for life. That's awesome. And I definitely, uh, can relate with that, you know, wanting to be able to do anything at any time and be prepared for it and, uh, not just survive it. You know, that's a big thing with this, uh, we talk about being ready for anything and in our training, doing that for people. We want you to thrive in those environments, not just, uh, you know, there's some training that you might be, you might bring yourself to a certain level of conditioning where you can survive just about anything, but you're going to be sure. like dead. Uh, you know, it's really thriving right. in those environments. So I think that's really awesome. Now you said you have, uh, moved to your garage. So what kind of equipment, uh, and setup do you have? I have, so again, this kind of came after the birth of my daughter, I was doing CrossFit and, um, I was like, there's no way I can leave for an hour, hour and a half a day, especially with a newborn. So, uh, through some hemming and hawing, I finally put together a package. Um, so I started with, uh, just a 35, you know, women's pound Olympic barbell, um, got like 250 pounds of plates, you know, and, uh, two kettlebells, an ab mat. Uh, I made the do it yourself, uh, squat stands and that's pretty much it. Oh, and a speed rope. Of course I have a speed rope. Um, and then from there I got a pull-up bar. Uh, but we, we don't need to talk about what happened to the pull-up bar because my brother sabotaged <laughs> me and, and installed it wrong. And I, I took one dip and then thing came crashing down. So Ooh. now I just Ooh. use it for rows. <laughs> <laughs> Did he set up uh, until a that goes back up there. Yeah. Yeah. I go, what, buddy, what were you doing, man? And he's like, yeah, I put it in upside down. I was like, thanks. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, Hopefully so no, no injuries. I, um, uh, my, my goal, uh, in my, my penny jar is, is for an erg, man. That's what I need. That's what I need in my life. Yeah. Those are, uh, 
Mine too. <laughs> Pretty popular, uh, you know, and, and very necessary in the garage gym, I think, especially if you – you said you're in uh, Boston area? Yes. Yeah, that's uh, – Something that you could do indoors only as opposed to having to run or something like that, you know, would be a huge plus in the, in that area. I have some family up there, and I know how crazy the, the weather can get. If I was in yeah, the cold, absolutely. I would already have one. If you were Yeah, one? yeah. If, if, if I was living in the cold, oh, I would yeah. already have one. I would, I would make that happen somehow. Yeah, San Diego, you don't have a lot of excuses, do you? Uh, I just I can run any day. <laughs> All right, Tiffany. So <laughs> so you uh, started the garage gym. It sounds like maybe it was primarily motivated because of the birth of your daughter. Is that is that true? Yeah. So I um, so funny enough, after I got the um, after I got my equipment, I started following just a local CrossFit that was free, <laughs> meaning that they published their workouts because some of them, you know, they go through certain webs. You can't follow them basically. So I was like, well, this is free. And I would just go on every day. And um, but I could also not do that one. And I could go back to the following day and sort of kind of cherry pick, which um, wasn't the most wasn't the best decision on my part. But so what was happening was um, like, let's say, for instance, I was doing the squat clean workout. And, you know, obviously through having a child, um, your body changes. And I just found them so taxing. And I could do some of the other movements, but man, these squat cleans, I would put 35 pounds on the bar and I, I couldn't finish them. And I was like, there's something wrong with what I'm doing. Because if I can't squat clean 35 pounds 10 times, that's just not me. That's not who I am. So that's when I started researching um, better programming <clears throat> because obviously this programming wasn't for me and I was just doing what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. So um, I fell across um, this glorious website uh, known as um, the End of Three Fitness, and I sort of I've plunged of into the one. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I um, it's it's cool. <laughs> Just check it out. So I sort of plunged headfirst into the one man one barbell, specifically with the goal in mind of, well, I'm not doing many squats, so that's probably why I can't squat clean. Um, <laughs> so I need to build up that sort of intensity. Uh, you know. So I started doing the one man, one barbell. And actually I, I, I had chatted with Joe at some point who said, no, this is really for you, the airstrike. So that's when I sort of switched over because I was like, okay, I'm doing the one man, one barbell. Um, and I'm certainly loving it. And I love the intensity of it. And you look at the workout and you go, oh no, I can't do that. But then you do it. And then you're like, did anyone else see that? No. It's just me. <laughs> so you kind of just like pat yourself on the back and uh, go about, but it was, um, it was something totally different from, <clears throat> When I say what I'm used to, it's more, you know, in my CrossFit, what I'm used to, right? So it was just me and this barbell, um, and I'm doing strict presses, and I'm doing, you know, squats, and and, and, and it was wonderful and magical, um, but there had to be more. And I was seeing such results just from the, um, like, the 15-minute workouts, too, you know, where you just program three work, three movements, which, again, maybe not be super crossfit -y, um, but I just enjoyed it. And so then that's when I was like, okay, but I just want to maximize a little bit more, so how do I do that? And that's when... Um, Joe said, well, why don't you try this, this new program that's starting? And, and, and I did, and, um, it, it's, it's been unbelievable. It's, it's been unbelievable. I've, I've been in the gym. I, I think I got my first gym membership when I was 18. And, um, I remember just standing with a barbell and, and being super timid to even go into like the weight area, um, because I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't know if I was doing it right to now I do have to go to the gym now because it's zero degrees outside and snowy so i have to get my rowing in so i go to the gym <clears> for that and I, I just don't even care like it's totally stripped away um any part of me that that cares if somebody's wondering why i'm have a kettlebell upside down and sort of <laughs> spitting and screaming as i'm doing it i don't really care you want to try it it's really hard <laughs> so it's sort of um stripped away all of, 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 I don't know, I don't want to say caring, but kind of to that degree where you just know that with every day you are trying your best um, and you're doing things that, you know, at least for me personally, that I, I never thought possible. I mean, geez, I, I can't run. I, I'm a bad runner, like bad running. Uh, and now I can, I can sort of yog, as I call it, because it's not really running. <laughs> there you go. Uh, soft, soft J. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, soft J. Like I can row, I, I can, I'll row hard. But I yog, <laughs> but it's getting me better. And it's, it's, it's really making me, um, to be the person that I want to be. I, I want for my daughter to, to, I don't care if she's athletic. I don't care. She can be books. She can be whatever she wants to be, but she will know how to move her body because people that don't move their body, 
I have a problem with. We should always be moving our body. We should be lifting appropriately. I think everyone should work out. I don't care what form of workout that is. Maybe it's not the garage gym athlete, um, but everyone should be moving. Everyone should be working out. I completely agree. And I think passing that on to your children is such a powerful thing. It's funny. I was just putting my son to bed. I think this was uh, last night or the night before. And I had I had moved my, my training session that day uh, to the evening just because of my schedule. And so he was kind of out there. And uh, then he asked me when I was putting him to, to bed, he's like, uh, why do you why do you work out so much? And, you know, he, he asked me questions like that. And I, I tell him, you know, to, to be healthy and all these different things. And then he's then he said, does does everyone work out like that? And uh, every day. And I was like, I was like, actually, nobody. Most people don't work out every day. And he's like, he's like, are you smarter than them? And I was like, uh, <laughs> uh, maybe, <laughs> you know, everyone should work out, though, every single day. So it's just cool to see how, um, like, you're not really trying to, like, force anything down their throats or whatever. It's just a part of your life. So it's going, going to end up, I hope, uh, as a part of their life, you know, as, as time goes on. So I think that's really, really powerful. Just move, man. That's all I ever say. Just move. Just move. Yeah. Kind of like that that uh, saying, if you, don't, if you don't use it, you lose it. I mean, yeah. I... I I think you, you can uh, discover that with just like your body, like people that will sit in their office chair all day, then they'll uh, drive home and then they'll go home and sit on the couch. And then if you're sitting all that time, your lower back's going to be shot within a year. And Absolutely. I, I had a desk job for a little while and I noticed mine got a lot weaker just doing that. And then I started standing and all that stuff. And then all of a sudden the back and the core strength was way up just just by that little simple thing. I, don't, I, I wish people would understand that a little bit more. You know, it's just like that same thing. Like, listen, I can't do push-ups. Well, if you work at it, all of a sudden you can do a push-up. You know, you can't you can't squat, but all of a sudden you, you get to a point where you can. And if, if I, I just wish, you know, if, if there's anything that I can do, it's just to show people that they can do that. Like, you can have the ability to break down your own barriers just to perform simple things. And I don't believe that anyone should pick up a barbell if they can't move a PVP. C pipe, which is the same for your body. If you can't do a squat, we'll work on doing a squat. It's proper body mechanics, and 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 it's just all about you know just understanding and teaching people. When I say teach people, I don't really I don't think I'm teaching them, but just you know at least if I'm I'm kind of being an example for people that you know they understand. People in my neighborhood see me all the time out there with kettlebells, and they look and go, "You're strong." It's like, well, what's your definition of strong? I, maybe I don't think I'm that strong, but I'm out here moving. And I'm out here doing something. So come on, join me. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and you mentioned going to the gym to get your rowing in and stuff. So do you kind of have like a seasonal uh, setup? Like when it's colder outside, you have a gym that you go to. And then when it's warmer, you you hit it up in the garage? Yeah. So, so basically, um, like let's say with this week's programming, um, I just joined as sort of like a month to month. Um, so with the rowing, I go in and row um, on those particular workouts. But like, Today is Friday, yes. Yeah. So I did Friday's workout today, which, you know, there was no real requirement for me to go to a gym aside from not having a pull-up bar, but we make do. I, I did rows with the pull-up bar. So um, if there's no running slash rowing, um, I, I'm strong on the rowing if we can't keep going back to that, <laughs> um, that, I, that I row. I'll always row. Um, but, yeah, so I, I, I'll go to the gym um, on those particular days. It, it, it's, you know, obviously going out to your garage takes – Point two seconds going to a gym takes 15 minutes to get there, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, next year, hopefully we'll eradicate that and my penny jar will blossom into a beautiful concept too. That's awesome. And so how long have you been in the garage? A year. A year. And how do you like it? Uh, I love it. Um, it's last year I had a space heater Um, but I got rid of that and, um, I'm happy that I got rid of that because it's, it's part of the experience. (laughs) It's like having a fan. I don't have a fan either. So why do I need to heat it up? We're going to do that all on our own. So, um, I, I love it because it works for me. It works for my situation. Um, I think sometimes I would benefit sometimes when I'm, you know, you're kind of in those, I don't know, you know, you're just in that mood, right? So you're like, well, I can just stop or I can, you know, you, you know, you kind of let that angel devil kind of push you. Um, so sometimes I, I, I wish somebody else was there with me and or I had someone else to share the experience with. Um, but one of my friends, I 
she's into fitness. So I'm always like, Hey, this is what I did to at least get, you know, some sort of, uh, out into the universe. Here it is. Um, but other than that, no, I just, I, I love it because, you know, you're just working with yourself by yourself. So I think that that adds another layer of, um, as, um, what I, I think of you for, for mental toughness. Um, because it's just you against whomever you against your garage. That's awesome. And yeah, I know I, I really love it. And I just knew that you're kind of a little bit, I'd say newer in the grand scheme of things, but it sounds like you, you know, you set yourself up, uh, for a lot of success down the road. So I'm excited to see uh, where you take things and what you're able to do next. Uh, Cause it's been a lot of fun having you in the program so far. Uh, but we got to ask some of these other questions, the the more fun ones, if you're ready for them. Uh, what's the hardest workout you've ever done? So the hardest workout I've ever done um, was probably something that wasn't even a workout. So I had, um, as I said, I, I, I bike too. So I, uh, I have a road bike and I wanted to get a mountain bike because uh, my wife has a mountain bike and it doesn't do much physical activity. So I was like, okay, there's a trail right by our house. I'm going to get a mountain bike. So I went to the bike shop and they said, Hey, we do this trail every, you know, every Friday morning. I, this was probably like five years ago. I was like, come on, come out. You know, here's the address. And they gave me the information. And I was like, all right, you know what? Let me try this out. So I uh, met them at the power lines, which is where this was. Um, and there was five men and me. Uh, and the night before I, I may have had a few libations and so they start pedaling and I'm like, shoot, I gotta go. So I'm trying to keep up with these men that do this weekly who also have, um, better equipment than I do. And I'm trying to keep up through these harrowing hairpin turns through the woods. And I made it my goal to stay with them. And it was the hardest thing I've, I think I've ever done. Um, it was like an hour of this, if not more. I don't even remember. And I remember after one of the guys comes up to me and he was like, that's your first time on a mountain bike? And I said, yeah. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, you, you kind of crushed that. Like, that's unbelievable. You should come back next week. And I'm like, yeah, totally coming back next week. I couldn't even put my bike on top of my car. I just kind of <laughs> shoved it in there, kind of slammed the door, smiled and waved, and then just just sort of like cried my entire way <laughs> getting to work and they go what is the matter with you I'm like my face was all white like I just felt so ill every part of me hurt but <clears throat> after that went away I was like does anybody even know what I just did no they don't but I did it and I crushed it and I felt really really good about myself after that that's Jared awesome. is all about being unprepared for a bike race yeah, for sure. And <laughs> I was going to mention, you said you, like uh, their bikes are a lot better than you. You know, I think it was Lance Armstrong who said, or maybe it's his book, it's like not the bike that matters. It's like, that's so untrue. Like the, the bike matters so much when you are biking, mountain biking, road biking, it matters a lot. So when you're, when you're pedaling, and I remember because the first time I did the 100 mile bike race, I had, yeah, that steel framed, like 25 pound, 30 pound bike. And there were literally children passing me on the uphill because they would just <laughs> put it into a lower gear and like, you know, speed on up. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I can't I can barely handle this. So the bike definitely matters. So that's that's incredible that you uh, you stuck to it, though. That's amazing. Yeah, it was like this race. And actually, this happened to me one other time, too. Some guy was on this. Um, there's a loop that I've, I've done on my house. It's probably about 25 miles. And. Uh, there's this one stretch of road and all of a sudden this guy comes out of nowhere on his road bike. And I was like, what in the heck? I'm getting pet. I didn't, I didn't even know where he came from. So I was like, oh no, oh no, 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 no. So I caught up to him and I would not let him pass me until he went down another road. And after that, I was like, who am I in a race with? Like you would have <laughs> thought it was like Lance Armstrong and I'm trying to like, it's little things like that though, that, that kind of makes you smile and laugh because people push you and they don't even know they're pushing you right like these two these two events they pushed me to do way more than i ever thought that i would purely because of my own ego or <laughs> that little person on my shoulder that was like no you can't let that happen you gotta go <laughs> I, w I won't lie that's happened to me on a quarter mile track more than more than a few times there'll be like some guy running 400s and i'm running like two miles but i won't i'll still try to not <laughs> let him beat me <laughs> on the 400 uh, yeah, I've definitely I've definitely encountered that before. All right, so in your opinion, what's the best activity for building mental toughness? Oh God, I, I mean, truthfully, it's it's sort of 
just an ongoing open-ended question, but, you know, um, sort of two things come to mind. I mean, I know you said one, but certainly the cold, but I know, you know, everyone doesn't have access to the cold, <clears throat> like that person that's in the bottom <laughs> of my brain. Um, but, but if you do have access to the cold, I think that that's, that's an unbelievable thing, but it, it comes to me as sort of just a mind over matter thing. I mean, I think there's so many things that we do in a day that, it's purely mind over matter. Um, whether it be, you know, I, you know, you wake up in the morning and you're so tired and you're like, I can't get through this day, but you do, you know, there's just these little times in our, in our life where, or days actually, where we're like, I can't do X, Y, and Z. But if you put your mind to it, you actually, you do it. And even if you don't put your mind to it, I mean, um, I read, um, the Cole, I can't remember the name of the book. You had him on the podcast with, um, uh, he was doing the breathing training. I, I'm totally forgetting his Brian name. Brian McKenzie? Uh, no, 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 no. He did the cold. He climbed the mountain Wim Hof. with uh, Oh, no, I know who you're talking about. Iceman. Yeah, not Wim Hof, but it was the guy who wrote a book about it, Wim Hof. I'm yeah. forgetting his name right now. Blanking. something. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Scott and he was Carney. saying how you can. Scott Carney, that's right. So you can suppress a shiver. And it's funny because I've actually done this. And and it, it just goes to that mind over matter sort of thing. You know, it's the same thing in a workout. Like, you know, you look at a workout and you go, oh, yeah, no, there's no way. But you've already cut yourself down where that purely is a mind over matter. Sure, there's certain times where our bodies will actually say no, and that's OK. But there's a lot of times where our mind says no. And your mind saying no is way different than your physical abilities. Um, and, and so I found that to be a curious thing where uh, if I really put my mind to it, you can overcome a lot of obstacles just by getting your mind right. Um, and that's true with the cold. And, and, you know, I see football players out there, you know, in negative 12 degree weather and you go like, how are they? I could never be out there in a t-shirt, but it's like, no, you actually could. You, they're moving, right. They're sweating. And they're so they're in the moment. And, and I could do that if I wanted to someone, one of my friends um, from North Carolina or South Carolina, actually, she was like, how much snow do you have? And she goes, I dare you to go jump in it. So I jumped in the snow <laughs> and I was like, don't send me with stuff like, cause it's what, what's going to happen. I'm not going to freeze. You know what I mean? So, and I wasn't even cold while doing it. So it's just, it just comes to that mental toughness of just that mind over matter um, for me is huge. Yeah. I would say that most people have never truly taken their body to a point where it just won't work anymore. It's always typically always, especially in our daily lives, it's always going to be the mind that stops you, not your body uh, for, right, for exactly. most everyone. All right. If you could only have one piece of equipment to train with for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, it's so hard to choose. It would either be uh, my barbell because it's very near and dear to my heart or the erg. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, have a hard, I have a hard time choosing. I mean, realistically, we have our bodies. So I guess if I had to get down to the nitty gritty, I, I'd probably let go of the barbell for the rower. Oh, nice. Big rower, don't make, rowing fan. <laughs> don't make me. <laughs> all right um so i'm actually going to take the rower off the table on this one because you've already said it a few times but if you could have add one piece of equipment to your garage gym no matter what it is what would it be but not a rower right oh, I get to... <laughs> not a rower <laughs> but not a rower so i get to add something to my gym um top of your wish list that's not a rower <laughs> it's not oh, man that's like Joe doing? just doesn't like hearing uh, rower anymore. <laughs> yeah. I'm say I, I would probably say um, an actual rack uh, with a little bit more safety precautions that it where might Where you can do a pull-up bar and not fall. <laughs> yeah, where I can do a pull-up bar and not fall. Or, um, you know, I could do a squat or a bench press and really um, not be scared of you know, death. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good start. That's, yeah. yeah. Safety safety is pretty important in garage gym. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I, I've gotten by thus far, but, um, I, I can't say that maybe I've probably haven't tested my true strength. Um, just given safety. So, um, so that would be a magical thing I think for me to, uh, to have those <laughs> for sure. All right. Here's the question of the show. What is the best advice you have for all the garage gym athletes out there listening to this? The best advice that I have for garage gym athletes is um, just to go and do it. Um, you know, we, we have we always have a space between our two ears that gets that gets either helps us or hurts us. Um, and I think when it comes to, you know, pushing yourselves, um, it, it can sometimes 
uh, truthfully hurt more than it can help. And I know that that's something that I battle, you know, if I, if I'm not feeling it or, or if I'm thinking it's hard, um, that's something that I truthfully, you know, battle. So just, you know, just dull the space between your ears, um, and, and just go out and do it. Just, just go out and do it because it's only you against, it's only you against yourself. So find whatever it is that motivates you and, and, and just do it. Awesome. Love that. And what's your daughter's name? Um, Lucy. Lucy. Well, nice to meet you, Lucy. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> no, no problem at all. Um, it's, it's a family show, so I love it when people's kids get involved. You're not the first. All okay. right. All right, Tiffany, it's been a blast having you on. Joe, you have any more questions? Uh, no, I'm cool. Yeah. All right, Nothing Tiffany. about more going. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Tiffany, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it, guys.